Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaskar, I am Mahesh Chandar, I am Principal Scientist at Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Ijat Nagar in UP. Today in this lecture, I will be discussing about organic poultry production. As you know, organic farming is rapidly expanding world over. So, area and number of producers and production, export figures, everything is growing every year in almost every country. So, looking at the rapid growth of organic farming. So, we are discussing this topic. So, we see if you look at within the organic farming, organic livestock sector is also the segment which is also rapidly emerging. Within animal uh, livestock production or organic animal husbandry, poultry is one important species which is also coming up very fast, especially in some countries there are rapid development and people are preferring this meat of the organic, organically grown raised poultry, meat and eggs. So, now you would like to know what is organic poultry. So, how what we say what is organic poultry and then organic poultry production refers to a method of raising chickens for meat and eggs that prioritize natural and sustainable practices. So, we have to look into these words natural and sustainable practices. So, it is so poultry can be raised conventionally where antibiotics are used, hormones, medicated feeds and all these can be used and routinely vaccinations are also done. But the organic poultry production is done following the organic standards. So, there are organic standards developed by many countries including India. In, in, in India, we the standards have been developed under national program for organic production, we call it NPOP. This NPOP uh, have developed organic standards, there is certification mechanism, there are certification bodies which certify organic production as per the when the organic poultry production has been done as per the prescribed standards, as per the norms prescribed by under the NPOP. So, this kind of a poultry production is called organic poultry production. So, and the product coming out of it they call organic eggs and organic meat, organic poultry meat. So, it could be and similarly there is organic dairying also, organic dairying and organic food production, organic spices production. So, likewise organic poultry production is there. So, here in this lecture we will focus on organic poultry production and also we will focus on grower groups. The poultry, organic poultry production can be done by the individual farmers also at the individual level having in their own poultry farms. But here what we are trying to follow the group approach because small scale farmers are often non sustainable. So, they can the, because the volume is very low processing and all it becomes difficult. Of course, the small scale farmers are contributing a lot towards organic products and consumers are buying from the small scale farmers in small quantities. But when we have to go to the large scale, so we have to look, we have to base our production by making cluster of the producers. So, what we call grower groups, so on the group basis. So, there is a same organic standards are followed on the group basis and there is an internal control system where the grower groups are educated on how to verify on their own level first before the certification body comes in to inspect these grower books are grower groups are educated enough on the organic standards so that at the internal control system is set up so that the grower groups among themselves they check in that whether they are following the standards or not so here the grow, grower group approach have been followed in in this particular lecture and how grower groups operate organic poultry systems so you might be thinking why do we need organic poultry at all so, now let me share you. So, there are some of advantages which are considered for organic poultry. What it is likely thing is that produce meat eggs of high quality and great taste. It may be controversial that it 
tastes great. Some people may not agree with it, but many people believe that when they are eating eggs coming from the indigenous or local uh, local poultry birds raised in pol backyard poultry and they feel that it tastes good. So also similarly some people claim that the quality is good. Some people may not agree with this idea that the quality and nutrition does not differ between organic and not on, on organic poultry. So, but the, some people, blame, many people say that they are tastier. The eggs coming and the meat of the desi bird or indigenous bird raised in the backyard system, not in a factory kind of a situation where large uh, poultry farms are there and the cages, poultry is in, raise, raised in cages. In case of organic poultry production, caged poultry is not allowed. We cannot keep poultry birds into cages. So, that is the welfare oriented aspect. Another thing is that prioritize natural characteristics. So, sometime when we are keeping naturally and the natural environment, so we, we, we give priority to natural production. So, then when we keep an art, artificial environment based on externally used inputs and kind of a uh, growth enhancers, sometime in the factory type of uh, organic poultry production, uh, factory type of production. So, lot many chemicals and these uh, growth stimulants and these things are being used which have adverse effect on human body. So, in organic poultry production these are avoided. The health and well being of the birds. So, often people feel that they eat, consume eggs and meat for their own health, but what about the health of the poultry? The health and well being of the bird is very, very important under organic production systems. So, that is why cage system is not allowed in the organic poultry rearing. So, birds are having opportunity to go around, move around in open area. So, they are having a shelter and whenever they feel like going inside the shelter, they can go and whenever they want to come out, they can go. They can go up in the perches and where they can sit on the trees and all whatever behavior, natural behavior of the birds is there, they can exercise. Unlike in the conventional poultry production, where poultry are kept 24 hour inside a small cages and they simply deliver eggs or they are later slaughtered for meat and they do not have any freedom as they are constrained. Unlike that conventional poultry production, organic poultry production is lot more welfare oriented. P birds have lot of freedom to exercise their natural behavior, move around and they, call, they go for pasturing. So, and then economic incentive also. Now, organic poultry products or even meat products or even the all even the uh, dairy products, now they are selling at the premium prices. Here is an opportunity for the producers, then they can cash upon this emerging system of production, wherein people are willing to pay high pr prices for the premium products. So, organic is considered to be good quality, safe, environmentally friendly production for which people have willingness to pay. As the income of the people is rising, they are willing more to invest for on their health. And then one, one of the way they feel of keeping themselves healthier to consume orga organic products. So, organic uh, poultry products give them opportunity to have healthier products for that reason also. So, now coming to the key principles which regulates organic poultry production. So, this is one is foremost is organic feed. Chickens are fed organic non GMO feed that is free from synthetic pesticides and fertilizers. This is a very important. So, organic feed is the very fundamental requirement after the housing. They should be poultry should be kept in a very good welfare oriented housing where they have a lot of freedom to move around and they have a pasturing facility also. When they there is extreme heat or there is kind of a cold, they can go inside the shed from the peep holes they can uh, come out and then potholes they can come out and they can inside as per their convenience. Similarly, feed has to be organic feed. It should be certified organic grown under organic as per the organic requirement for growing poultry feed. So, so they are fed and it should not be GMO feed. Genetically modified uh, organisms should not have been used in producing food. So, it should not be GMO feed. GMO is highly restricted and even prohibited under the organic uh, feeding of organic poultry. Then outdoor access as I told earlier, then they should have outdoor access. Unlike permanently kept in the cages, 
they should have access to outdoor birds have access to the outdoor allowing behaviors like foraging and dust bathing you might have seen sometime poultry birds do dust bath in the dust they, they spread the dust on their own heads and all their body that is called dust bathing so there they have that facility if you are rest, uh, containing that poultry boat inside a gaze in, inside a cage they don't get that freedom to dust bath or to foraging so when they go foraging they can choose insect of their choice or other material they can uh, pasture on and they, the foraging facility is there sometimes some large vehicles are also used wherein they are transported to some other foraging area so that is this kind of innovative designs are uh, designed by the uh, this poultry housing uh, experts they design different kind of a they, they use their creativity how to make more welfare oriented housing for poultry so so that they can be given very good outdoor access so that is also very important that the poultry birds should get foraging facility and dust bathing facility or also they can climb up to the perch uh, perches so then where from there they, 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 they can sit for some time and they feel very very convenient and very happy they feel by by enjoying that freedom and also no antibiotics and hormone so that is also very important requirement under organic poultry production they should not be given any hormones and antibiotics are restricted so that is the use of antibiotics and growth hormones is prohibited focusing on holistic health of the chickens so it is always prevention is better than better than cure so we should not need if our preventive facility we uh, mechanism is very strong we are allowing this fresh air and the proper lighting and the kind of freedom to move around if we are making this kind of things available for the poultry birds so they don't need they don't have health problems and they won't need they will not need antibiotics or hormones to be given to them for the productivity so we have to be we have to be prevent prevention oriented than the treatment oriented that is very important if you look at uh, poultry sector organic poultry sector so global market if you look at first of all organic products are rapidly growing market size is growing there is more revenues coming from organic whether it is crops cereals fruits nuts vegetables so everywhere there is growth very good growth and more and more number of countries are adopting organic uh, organic farming practices and then organic farming is being supported in many developing countries by the way of government programs and the several schemes there is promotion of organic so that promotion schemes incentive and uh, incentive from the government size and the attraction of the premium prices it is leading to the increased global uh, uh, demand and also include production and then the market is growing rapidly if you look at here in last 3 years then the, this area this market size has increased from less than 10 billion to it has crossed 10 billion in 2000 it is going to cross in to uh, 10 billion uh, dollar in 2025 so, uh, that is uh, then then if you look at currently it is nearly about a little bit above 10 billion uh, dollar in size the organic market is projected to grow at a CAGR of 5.8 percent from 2022 to 2027 you can imagine that how much growth is happening this growth is happening just because consumers are becoming more quality conscious they are now reading the brands and they are getting attracted for the organic products if you go if you visit any shopping mall shopping store you f you, you find some lot of poultry products or dairy products or even the fruits and vegetables nuts and spices in the growing number of stores are keep stocking organic products in their self that include organic poultry products dairy products or many other kind of products eggs so so that and growing number of consumers are coming forward to buy organic products and they are ready to pay premium prices for that and so for that reason many dairy farmers many poultry farmers from conventional to they are switching over to organic production looking at the lucrative market available now so what are these drivers of market growth we look at increased consumer awareness it is a very important aspect i would like to focus on this one consumers when they were not much educated one and they were not have much income previously so now as education level is going up 
as the through the mass media and the, then there are so many other channels now available, social media including. So then, then sometimes there is peer pressure. Suppose my neighbor is consuming organic poultry products. So I would also get tempted to buy organic, organic poultry products or meat products or dairy products, thinking that let me also taste that thing. So that increased consumer awareness. Now there are many channels available which can, which are uh, making consumer aware about the benefits of consuming organic products. That is more consumers becoming aware of health benefits of organ, uh, health benefits of organic food. It means what? It will lead to the growth of the market. So, increased consumer awareness is number one factor for the growth of organic poultry or maybe other organic products as well, dairy, organic dairy products as well. So, health benefits of organic food, now people are coming, reports are coming up, there are health benefits of organic products. Organic foods rich in vitamins, antioxidants and omega 3 fatty acids. Now, these are established that organic foods contain, uh, they are rich in vitamins, antioxidants and omega 3 fatty acids. Some may contest this thing, but majority of the people now, is, they have started believing in that organic foods are rich in vitamins, antioxidants and omega 3 fatty acids and then it leads to their good health. That is why they should consume organic products. Surge in demand for poultry, uh, this organic poultry products, there is rapid growth in consumer demand for organic chicken and eggs. So, all what I am saying, only I am indicating that there is rapid growth in consumer demand for organic chicken and eggs. If you look in the United States, there is the, this organic uh, chicken meat is the one of the fastest growing sector there. So, likewise in many countries this is happening. So, growing consumer awareness of health benefits driving rapid growth of organic food market especially for poultry products. So, so what I mean that there the all organic products are, are experiencing rapid market growth mainly because of the increased consumer awareness. More, the, more and more consumer are getting awareness, there is tendency to buy more of the organic products. That is why in super stores, shopping malls are increasingly keeping their self stocked with organic products, including organic chicken and eggs. So, then health conscious consumers will definitely go for that, because that will help them reduce their expenses on the health, so that they can pass on that, save on that whatever they have saved in their health expenditure that can they can they can spend on buying organic products so this this is the trend which is being witnessed very everywhere there are several big companies now they are the key players in organic production market organic poultry product market so tyson is the company it is a key poultry producer companies like tyson foods foster farms are major poultry producer global scale if you look at so key meat producers Companies like Cargill Meat Solution and Tyson Foods are major meat produ producers. There are several organic brands. So, in case of dairy products in India, there are several brands coming up from the private dairy companies. They are taking the lead, including the dairy private dairy cooperative, including the dairy cooperatives. They are also coming forward so to produce organic dairy product like milk and the milk, uh, the curd or butter oil, even the cheese. Even now, we have started exporting these products to Gulf countries mainly, because in many other developed countries, because of the certain reasons, health reasons, foot and mouth disease and so many, these kind of disease which are not yet eradicated from India, we are not able to export these kind of a pro livestock product to many countries, but in some countries, we, we are able to export, so we are exporting slowly, slowly. So, th there are several large conglomerates like Tyson Foods and Cargill, have, they have significant market share in organic poultry and other, other meat pack products, other meal products. So, there are not only these big companies in the western uh, market, there are also no regional markets also coming up very fast. Asia Pacific region is dominant in global meat, uh, global market. This region includes major countries like China, India. Australia, Japan, Australia and Indonesia, which together generate majority of market demand. So, Asia Pacific region, these countries are also equipping themselves with the uh, organic uh, poultry industry, meat industry, dairy industry. Other key regions are Western Europe, Eastern Europe, North America, South America, Middle East and Africa. They are, these regions have significant demand, but lower compared to Asia Pacific. 
key countries uh, the, the are Germany, France, UK, USA, Brazil, Russia. So, these, these countries are heavily engaged, there is a huge demand coming up and that is demand is going up. First of all, there is demand from many countries, many within European countries there is demand, export demand. If, if Italian dairy farmers is producing cheese, he is not producing cheese only for domestic consumption. So, it is also producing cheese for the export market in other European countries. Likewise, many, uh, many countries are they are also engaged in export, ex exporting the organic products. So, then looking there is a market is growing for the export of these products. So, Asia Pacific drives majority of global demand due to high population and economic growth in countries like China and India. So, as this disposable income is going up as we call it rising middle class. When we say the middle class is increasing in size, then more and more number of uh, people they are consuming meat products. Also, you, you look at in, there is a tendency among people when they, there is income rise, they tend to consume more of the animal products. So, if we, if that is the tendency that or those who are the eaters of meat, those who consume meat products or eggs, they will switch over to as their income further rises, they may switch over to organic poultry, poultry meat product or uh, eggs organic egg consumptions. So, that is heavily linked with the uh, with the income also. That is why sometimes people say blame or they complain that the organic production or organic market is only a niche market for the limited number of people because of these products are very expensive. Many common people cannot afford them. That is why they say that it is a niche market. But slowly, slowly organic products are coming from the market niche and in general other people are also started buying, to, buying thing, buying organic product. So, now all these organic production, whether it is for the crops, fruits and nuts, vegetables or dairy products or poultry products. They are all uh, regulated and by organic livestock and poultry standards. So, then the organic livestock and poultry standards have been developed by many countries, by the European Union, by the national organic program of United States, Canadian organic standards, Japan standards, China standards, almost many countries and those countries we so far have not developed organic standards, they are now in the process of developing organic standards, so that they can regulate and they can uh, develop their organic sector. For that organic st standards is, is the basic requirement, because these organic standards will be followed by the farmers in order to produce products organic ways in the organic manner. Standards for organic livestock and poultry, minimum outdoor space requirement for poultry, access to vegetation. So, when you look at in case of India, if you are inter interested in organic standards, you have to look into national program on organic production NPOP document, where the organic livestock and poultry standards are also included. So, what these standards say, they have prescribed minimum outdoor space or in day indoor space and require then access to vegetation. So, again I am saying that the in case of uh, in case of poultry, they should have pasturing facility, where they can pasture on they can forage on. So, outside they can they can move around and they can find their own food. So, the the access to vegetation is also in case of dairy animal it is also required. They should have opportunity to go, go out and graze on the graze grasslands. So, at least for certain hours of a day. So, that, that is. Then living condition, shelters allowing natural behavior, bedding for hygiene and comfort. So, these standards if you look at these standards they have mentioned that what kind of living conditions should be there? There should be shelters which allow natural behaviors. So, the every species of animal they perform certain uh, natural behavior they have. So, that they should have that freedom to follow, observe that behavior and exercise that behavior. If you are restricting that particular animal species from allowing or exercising its natural behavior, they will feel stressed. So, stressed animal. So, these toxins will be produced in that the stressed animal's body and these toxins may harm pass on to human 
when they consume such products. So, if at all we have to eat ultimate, uh, ultimately these animals for our own food consumption, we have to slaughter these animals. So, we have to be very careful just to keep them in good condition, in a happier, in a welfare oriented way by providing the different kind of welfare oriented measure by following the standards. So, we can ensure happiness of the animal by taking care of their welfare. Maybe we are going to kill them ultimately for our own consumption, but we have to ensure they are raised in the welfare condition. Say for example, bedding for hygiene and comfort should be provided to them. So, that puts them comfort, so we have to ensure that it is provided. Stocking densities are also prescribed in this specific indoor and outdoor density requirement for poultry. How many number of poultry birds can, can be kept under a particular shed, poultry shed, it is already already given in the standards. So, number of. So, we cannot see that the, the poultry side is overcrowded with many and also they say it, it should be flock should be numbered. So, the flock should be numbered and the different dates and all the mixture of the flock should not be there, it should be uniform in the in the world. So, that then then and the density how many number of poultry birds are kept inside of it that is as per the space allowance as prescribed in this is standards, it should be followed. So, if you look at the health standards, emphasis on nutrition and parasite prevention allowed medicine to minimize pain. So, emphasis should be given on the very good nutrition, very natural organic, organically produced nutrition should be given, no, no uh, medicated feed should be given to poultry and then pre, uh, the parasite prevention should be done in a natural way by using natural method for that, unless it is specifically required. So, that should be given on the basis on the prescription of the veterinarian who is one qualified animal health care provider. So, then in case of the if poultry birds if because of the injury or some other reason, if it is in the pain, then the pain killers can be given, allopathic medicines can be given because there is no proven re uh, remedy available to minimize the pain. So, we, we cannot see the poultry bird or any other animal in the in the pains and we, we, we cannot say that we will not give allopathic medicine and then because we are the organic poultry producer or organic dairy farmer. So, we, we since we are organic and allopathic medicines are prohibited, not allowed, we should not that is not the case. This is allowed under this condition where there is no other remedy is available and animal is in the pain and the, and the disease and whatever a health a, a problem is there, there is no alternative available. That is why the veterinarian will prescribe this kind of a uh, alternate uh, this medicines, allopathic medicine. Physical alteration, limites, limited alteration for again safety. So, sometime debicking and sometime mutilation is done. So, just to some decorate animal or for some other reasons. So, these their bodies are mutilated. These mutilations are not allowed in general, but there could be certain exceptions. So, there may be limited alterations can be done. So, transport and slaughter, there are standard for the transport also, guidelines for long transports, humane slaughter, slaughter standards. Sometimes people feel that anyway, these are the animal, we can, we, you can slaughter in any way, but this slaughtering has to be very humane way. It, it, there should not be much cruelty done while killing the animal also and then the standards also prescribe how animal should be slaughtered. So, there are standards for slaughtering, standards for transport also, how the poultry birds transport. Sometimes we see that they are being transported in the cramped condition. Sometimes you see on the way people are taking birds for slaughtering or selling, they in the small uh, boxes they are kept in a cramped condition, somehow in a very pathic condition, in so big uh, baskets they are kept, sometimes they are hangs their heads are hanging down and they are transporting in the bicycles. So, that is kind of a cruelty and this kind of transport of poultry birds or even other animals, sheep and goat and all or even the dairy animals when they are being transport, uh, transported, there are detailed prescribed standards for that, how animals should be transported even if they are being taken for slaughtering. Sometimes people feel, feel anyway they are being going to be slaughtered, why to feed them? It is very important they should be fed well, they should be given water properly. So, maybe ultimately we are slaughtering them, we have to take good care of animals. 
So, how these are these standards are followed up? There is a NPOP standards are there. So, you again time and again I say that, so you have to refer to the document national by uh, developed under NPOP, National Program on Organic Production, NPOP and then you can find out this document by visiting the website of the APIDA, www.apida.gov.in. So, if you, if you visit this website, you will find then you go, you go to the section where there is national program of organic production. In this program, you there are several information has been given. So, detailed information has been given, but if you are looking for the standard, then you look for the standards, organic standards. So, then you look uh, standards and then standard section you go to the organic livestock and poultry standards. So, what we call it appendix 2 in the NPO document, you will find detailed standards for the organic poultry production. Suppose you are a new poultry producer, you are interested in taking a poultry enterprise and then how you will go about, how you will start your poultry uh, establishment or poultry farm in an organic product by following organic procedure, then you will find that information. Or if you are a conventional organic uh, conventional producer of poultry or dairy and want to switch over now, because looking at the growing demand, if you want to switch over to organic poultry production, then you will be you will find the information there. What is the conversion requirement? How much time it will take to convert from? to conventional to organic. Generally from the day one of the hatching, then the onwards you have to raise poultry birds. So, as by following the organic standards in order to claim organic producer uh, status. So, then now coming to organic poultry farm certification. So, we, we so here it is uh, now I am not talking about the individual poultry production. Uh, I am talking, I am following the group approach, wherein several poultry producers, they, they form a cluster or group and what we call as a grower group. So, this is a grower group dynamics is a little bit different than in the individual one, but both whether the grower group or the individual organic poultry farmer, they have to follow the same standards. But in case of grower groups, there is ICS we call it internal control system. Certification of organic poultry farm is rigorous process that aims to ensure farm adhere to organic standards. Because organic standards are written standards which are available in case of India NPOP, in case of United States they are national organic program they, they stand, NOP standards. In, in case of Europe there are the Euro guidelines, uh, European guidelines for organic product production they, where there are organic poultry standards also. Then there are certifying bodies who verify criteria like feed quality, living condition and health management. They ensure that these are met. So, they make a visit to the poultry, poultry farm or the, they, they first educate, give education to the grower groups so that they develop a internal control system, wherein if every farmer can tell to other neighboring farm because they are a group then they can tell that you are not doing as per the requirements, you have to do like that. So, one poultry farmer can learn from other poultry farmer also. So, then they can see and improve wherever he is faltering, he can improve upon, he can learn from each other. Because basic training have been provided to them, how to go for organic poultry production. Because sometime in the groups, one poultry on the poultry farmer may be less aware, other may be, may be better aware. So, they among themselves, they can educate each other uh, about the organic standards. Then the certificate, certifying bodies, they are likely to inspect the site or they can, they can see the uh, record. Because the record maintenance is very important criteria under organic management of, uh, of, uh, of any animal species, maybe for dairy animal, maybe for poultry or maybe for sheep and goat and other animal or, or in case of crops. So, keeping the record is a very important and the record has to be for every aspect in case of parental detail, in case of where it is coming, what um, feed was given and all different kind of information and then there is also a form that what kind of information a poultry producer is supposed to record, keep record of for the inspection bodies, for the certification agencies. So, the organic poultry farm are for to be verified and to be certified. Then 
if you look at again coming to the grower, grower group, what is the definition and purpose? So, co collective group of farmers, you know the small scale farmers, if you one is having 5 birds in the backyard situation, sometime they have 5 birds, 10 birds or maybe 20 birds, that is a very small operation. Sometime it becomes very expensive to verify or inspect and make all that kind of a certification arrangement in case of a small scale producers in particular. So, if it, there is a large scale farm, then can that can run individually on its own, but nowadays looking at the small scale operations many and then just to increase the vol looking at the vo increased volume, so importance of the large volume. So, then grower groups uh, is being promoted. So, including in India now there is emphasis on grower groups, because the small scale farmers can come together and they can be trained on organic certification, organic standards, all the organic production procedures, guidelines and then grower groups can be made very much informed about, well informed about organic production procedures. So, in this case of the collective group of farmers operate organic poultry farms, farmers organizing groups to promote prom organic farming. So, then they, they are they, they are promoting in a group basis and they are helping each other about the, uh, the compliance of the organic standards. Sometime it happens that one or two farmers are not complying, sometime uh, uh, the whole group affects. So, that is a it is a internal kind of a control system, wherein a, if a farmer they are not complying with certain standard, other farmer because of the internal con uh, control system in the in, in place, they will ask them to comply with the standards, otherwise it is not group good for the whole group. So, then they, they can bring that for faulting, faltering farmer into line and to make them follow the organic guidelines. So, here it is adherence to the national standard, it is very important. If you are going for organic production in India, we are supposed to follow the national program on organic production guideline for organic production, because we are Indian organic producers. Suppose we are producing for the some importers in some other country, so they may ask to follow their standards in order to, so that they will import it, but these are being this, uh, these standards are being matched, so that we can export the product. So, there is more more similarity between the standards of the different countries, there is not much deviation. So, even if deviation are there, so this is seen that they are they are agreeing to the differences whatever they are and otherwise they are the, it is seen that they are agreeing. Groups ensure farmers follow guidelines and regulations. So, this is very important for this helps also in a, in a lot many ways because this is internal control that. So, these farmers can, can control among themselves, there is no external intervention, but within themselves they are uh, educating others and how they can. Sometime individual farmer who is living in isolation, he find it very difficult to comply and sometime he does not know something, but when they are in group, one farmer is knowing one thing, other farmer is uh, knowledgeable about other standards, third farmer is others, they can help each other in understanding the organic standards and they can be helpful to each other. So, if you are do, uh, going by grower group approach, then we can educate and assist farmer to grow crops organically or raise poultry organically. So, whatever now grower groups are being promoted in a case of crops also, in case of livestock. So, this is a very promising area where the grower group is having a very good future and the many western countries they are also following this approach. So, they are have they have uh, uh, recently European Union or EU guidelines have also uh, provisioned for the grower group approach, so that they can also organize, growers can organize and there is internal control system help them go for organic production. So, the inspection protocols are there. So, applies to diverse grower groups, farmers cooperatives, contract producers and small scale processors. You might have seen in case of poultry, contract production is very, uh, very much in uh, practice many many uh, many poultry producers they are be, uh, producing uh, on contract basis for the many bigger companies so they 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 enter into contract with the big poultry uh, companies and small scale producers they they uh, on contract basis they produce they negotiate the terms and condition and then many small scale processors also they are on contract basis they are doing it so grower groups or farmers cooperative 
in case of dairy cooperative is sundarani dairy in west bengal so by supported by national dairy development board it is on the it is a cooperatives wherein the farmers have come together and jointly doing dairy dairying activity and organic dairy products they are making that is one very good example sundarani dairy in west bengal likewise in poultry some organic poultry group will emerge later on looking at the benefits of joining hand together and forming a grower group so then also the government is promoting farmer producer organizations farmer producer companies so then the organized groups are very they are well suited for organic production because is small scale operations often suffer from the want of the certification often they are not able to meet certification cost sometimes they find it is too expensive and certification agencies they also find not much economic incentive in certifying very small very small uh, operations poultry farm a small poultry farm having few birds so they will find it very lucrative when they join hands and they expand the number of poultry maybe individually they are but they can they can form groups there are provision for in individual farm inspection that is fine farm larger than 4 hectare are inspected separately ensuring rigorous compliance so there is a size of farms also how how big farms will be inspected separately and the size of farm all everything has been mentioned and the, to the minute detail in the standards and more beyond the suppose anyone who is not able to understand these standards well these certification bodies they also give consultancies certification bodies give consultancies and there are many other consultants also who help the uh producers organic producers they they share with them the skills required and the documentation required on other detailed guidelines how to do it they give the practical tips total inspector area less than 50% of the group's area so so what they do sometime the certification agencies may not go to all the farm individually if it a grower groups wherein there are several farms they they may decide that 50% of the farms at random they can inspect so that inspection and certification is very important aspect under the organic production scene so let me say something about the internal control system also because in the grower groups internal control system has a very strong role so what is that internal control system organic farming group set procedures policies and practices to monitor and adhere to standards so beforehand before beforehand they form a grower group they decide internal rules uh, so this the internal policies procedures and practices to monitor and adhere to the standards a standard document is already available in the very first hand they, what they have to do they have to decide their own rules how they will run the group is what we call and then they have to set the procedures suppose somebody violating that rule they can they can warn that person you are not following the policy because what they have all agreed because all the growers beforehand they have agreed for the procedure policies and practices beforehand that they will unitedly they will follow the organic standards so internal control system is left to the management of the grower groups so they do is purpose of the ics is that the primary purpose of ics is to maintain and verify adherence to the national standard of organic production so nsop we call it under the npop or other relevant organic standard there can be some other standards also but we are here mainly talking about national standard for organic production as under the produced uh, developed under the npop uh, india's national program for organic production so what are the different components of the internal control system key components include implementation of procedures internal standards and a systematic risk assessment process so this is to be decided by the grower group what how they will implement the procedures so what will be their internal standards so how they will punish a member grower group member who is not following the they can remove also that person they can say that you are not adhering to the standard you can no longer be the part of this group that kind of they can decide on this thing this, this particular uh, aspect they can decide beforehand that under such and such conditions you will be removed from the group you will not no, no longer be the part of the grower group because there are several conflicts also in the grower groups so they sometimes they don't agree for something there is disagreement so there are lot many con, uh, conflicts so they have to follow 
follow the conflict management process. So, then there are implementation procedure, organic farming group members consistently follow organic practices with the use of established procedures. Once they have established the procedure beforehand and then they find it easier to follow the organic standards. So, internal st uh, standards created to support ex external organic standards covering farming, livestock, pest control, etc. So, once they have very strongly formed the internal uh, standards, internal all protocol they have formed, rules, regulation all they have and the what all the uh, policy and the standards for internal control they have set that helps them to adopt external standard who are the organic poultry standard for example, when internally they have set in motion the procedure and the protocol for operating the group, grower group, so then they find it easier to implement the uh, external standards. So, which have which has several uh, related to disease management and how the feeding management and the housing management and then all this in case of poultry or in case of other livestock species. So, that is very important internal standards are set in motion first, so that the external standard which are organic standards can be followed well. Then the risk assessment is also important, risk assessment process in internal control system aim to identify mitigate potential organic production risk preserving system integrity. So, what happens many a time there is a lot of risk in entering into any venture that is true in case of organic poultry production also there would be risk. How they will meet up the risk? So, then they decide beforehand. So, this they decide then what they will how they will mitigate the risk and how will identify what are the potential risks. So, that they can make arrangement to meet out the challenge of the risk that is also important. So, also the, the, it is a matter of uh, discussion also how group size and certification process will be followed up. Grower groups ranges from 25 to 500 farmers. So, that is the, the it could be so may be 25. So, sometime it may, may not be uh, viable that it if it is less than 25 farmers. So, then it could be as large as 500 farmers. So, then promoting uh, a, a communal approach means that a community approach on the basis of and the a, a form of a kind of a cluster what we call otherwise cluster a group of farmers. So, that can be minimum 25 and it could be of the 500 farmers. So, and then the certification process is the second part processors and traders undergo annual annual inspection by external agencies. So, then then so, annually they are inspected by external agencies, internal control system is looking after day to day aspects. So, every day on monthly basis and the, all the records are being seen, they are checking the records or whether records are well maintained well by each uh, grower group and all each farmer is uh, maintaining the record properly and the, uh, the group basis everything is being monitored as per the pre decided rules and all the procedures what they have established, then the certification agency may visit uh, annually, annual inspection they, they may come. So, that, that that is by external agency means by the certification agency it may come for inspection and they will ver verify whether the grower group has followed right approach or not. So, then what are the certification conditions? So, one is the strict adherence to internal control system. This is the very much number uh, number one requirement often it is seen that the they do not some of the farmers they do not follow uh, then uh, they do not adhere to the uh, ICS rules and procedures. Obviously, in a group there are some bad individuals and there are there are some good individuals it is a mixed bag. So, they, they have to be and either that the, those who are the good people those who adhere to the rules and regulation they can improvise these people those who are not following. So, but this is the job of the grower group to look into the interest of the members and how they are doing it, how to improve upon them, how to prevail upon them to bring online following in line as per the procedures of RCS. Certification body demands strict adherence to con internal control system by all certified farmers. So, if they are going to be called certified organic farmer, they are supposed to follow the guidelines of the ICS in a proper way. So, otherwise they will not be eligible for the given the status of certified organic. So, then there is 100 percent internal inspections are there where the farm grower group themselves inspect each 
is farmers activity. Certification body requires certified farmers to do 100 percent internal inspection to ensure compliance. So, each and every farmer has to see other farmer that every farmer is following the procedure and guidelines for the organic production. This is much certification agency before going inspecting it, they would like that they would be ensure that the each farmer has adhered to the guideline and they are among themselves they are satisfied. Before putting their farm for the external certification, they have to be assured that each member within their go own grower group has followed the organic standards as per the prescribed standard it has followed. It is very important this certification uh, agency may not external agency may not agree to verify or go for certification if they know that they have not done 100 percent internal inspections. It helps them because once the grower group is saying that we are fully satisfied and the all members are complying with the standards, they are for they have followed the standards, then it, it makes the job of the certification agency easier when they visit for inspect the organic farm, organic farm, poultry farms or the grower groups their production facility, they are first hand assured by the grower group that the all standards have been followed. Then later on they start checking the record themselves and they start verifying by on site visits. They look into the whether they are that the it is truly uh, the uh, standards have been truly followed or not. So, certification denied without ICS that as I said that if you have not having any ICS in place and then farmers without proper ICS in place will be denied certification. Yes, and if in the grower approach, grower group approach if you are following, then we have to take assurance from the grower group that they have followed the standard fully and if they have not done it, the certification agency can deny certification. If it is denied, the farm grower group will not get the certificate of the compliance of the organic standard, it will put them in trouble because their production whatever they have done, it will remain unverified, uncertified, then they cannot sell that product as the organic certified organic product. Once they are selling it as a conventional product, but they have invested as per the requirement of the organic standard, maybe partially, but when they will go into market without the proper logo, without the seal of the certification agency, without the logo of the NPOP uh, logo, government of India logo seal for organic production. So, if it is not there, they will not be able to market their product as certified organic product, they will, there will be loss of the income, they will lose income because organic products often command enjoy market premiums they will lose this market premium if they are nodding. So, non-compliant farmers can farmers found to be non-compliant during audits will face individual inspections. So, if they are not compliant, so still later on say on their request they will have to go, now the other grower group will not support them because there are good member who are complied with and then those non-compliant during audits will face individual in inspections and they may be penalized for that one, not adhering to the standards. So, penalty, penalties are very heavy. So, sometimes they may be asked to remove for certain times and some uh, certification or uh, farms. They will find no certifi certifier to they default and uh, they are consistent in defaulting organic standards and not adhering to standards. The certification agencies may not agree to inspect their farms because they are the persistent and regular defined people. So, it is, uh, it is uh, in the favor of, it is in the interest of the uh, certified organic producer that they, they are compliant to the organic standards. So, it is very important for them. So, what are the different uh, component of the internal control system? Process and procedure ensuring controls are carried out properly, that is one. Policies and guidelines outline control objectives, we should have policies and guidelines which outline control objectives, what we are going to control that should be beforehand known, risk assessment, evaluation of the risk and controls needed to mitigate them. So, beforehand it should be thorough, uh, throw bare, it should be 
very clearly sir such and such risk are likely in this operation this and this kind of thing may happen which affect our organic status so that and we for that what we should do it beforehand we should be ready so that is the job of internal control control system to ensure um, that uh, that the ics work well so then again the ics manager oversee inspections approvals and overall compliance so they internally they decide that there will be some ics internal control uh, system manager and then the, he will uh, he will see inspections approvals and overall compliance he then then uh, there is internal control inspector whose role is internal and approval committees conduct farm level assessment and make decisions so these are the different role within the ics local internal standards align with national npop standards internal inspection by the ics including internal inspection inspectors are conducted regularly at least twice a year so when their ics is in place so they can devise a status that uh, a mechanism that at least twice in a year these these uh, grower groups and then the individual farmers are uh, uh, visited and seen and then conflicts of interest are declared and proactively mitigated to ensure unbiased assessment so it is very important that as i told in early there there are likely to be some conflict so that that there might be some disagreement some people may may have some problem these issues are to be settled beforehand it's not the later on later on it will put in difficulty this one so responsibilities of the farmer follow organic farming standard they have to adhere to the internal organic standards and guidelines from internal control system this is the responsibility at the level of farmers avoid prohibited inputs they should not use prohibited input once they have been told don't use such and such inputs in the poultry production or any other livestock species production they should refrain from using synthetic pesticides herbicides or fertilizers on organic fields actively participate in training take part in all training organized by the ics for continuous learning they should they should be meticulous in keeping the record maintain prescribed farm record precisely as required by the internal control system control system be a steward of the ecosystem avoid tree cutting burning organic material and generating plastic waste sell through exclusive channel only sell certified products through the ics for market consistency report violation and accept sanctions when they are san sanctions are imposed on them they should accept it they should not get into argument report any breach of standard to ics and accept prescribed sanctions collaborate during inspection allow inspectors from ics and certification body progress access sometime sometime people don't allow so that is not uh, uh, accepted training of ics personnel and farmers they need uh, uh, training talk uh, then the documentation how to uh, document the record and the organic farmer training are required if uh, organ under organic production system then the buying check farmer status compare of amounts document details all these are thing to be leaked and maintained in record form so then it is inspected and verified at every level storage handling procedures and processing there are detailed standards you can find so all in the standards document this any any uh, interested uh, farmer he has to look into very closely what are the standard for storage suppose you are storing x how to store you are handling or organic poultry what are the procedure and how to process these product these are the detailed processes of rebel so then there is inspection process internal inspection as i told that ics conduct 100% internal inspects inspections certification bodies inspect a sample of farm based on risk so they can take sample and they can inspect the farm then accreditation certification bodies are accredited to conduct inspection so that these are all the part of the organic uh production procedure so uh, external inspections are there internal inspections are by ics and then external in inspection by the certification bodies it is to be done so yield estimate traceability and documentation all organic production is mostly documentation based you have to keep record and you have to feed this record into the computer system maintained at the trace net trace net level so this traceability has to be established so that one who is consuming organic poultry products then he can go back and see how the poultry is being raised so country chain is maintained and one is should be 
uh, should be allowed to see, go back and see how the production is taking place. And then the final certification, initial external inspection conducted when you start organic poultry production first, uh, external in, uh, agency certification body look into, uh, they make inspection and step, step, step one is certification body decides on certification, step two is certificate issued if certified and then annually farmers maintain compliance for renewal. So, healthier poultry, healthier you. So, finally, I want to say healthier chickens, environmental stewardship, consumer confidence, collaborative excellence, sustainable agriculture, these are all the concepts related to organic poultry products. If you are consuming certified organic products, organic poultry products, egg, meat, it's so you have to keep your poultry healthier, so it will make you healthy. So, uh, so healthier chicken is very important and then you have to take care of environment and that if you certified organic products, so wins the confidence of the consumer, they are assured that it is of good quality. So, then it is and then grower groups assure they collaborate each other for the excellence. So, that ultimately lead to the sustainable production and sustainability is well taken care of. So, what I believe that what I told about the organic poultry production through the grower group approach, internal control system, certification procedures, detailed standard which are available under MPOP document. What I believe that you what you understood it, if you did not understand, under, understand it well from this lecture, you can look into the documents, available literature, you can browse the website, you can look into the YouTube videos to the understand this lecture further well. Thank you very much.